Support for The Hub is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technological developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide, and I got an exclusive offer for you guys. 20% off plus free shipping with the code HUB, H-U-B. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code HUB, H-U-B, at Manscaped.com. Here, what's up Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another Giants video. As usual, shout out to all you great supporters out there. Shout out to the members, you know, the best supporters out there. And everybody that tunes into streams always shows up to the vids, likes it, subscribe, all that. Shares it out. You guys mean the world to the channel. Channel would not exist without you but let's get into today's video real quick i kind of got inspired to do this after it hit me and i realized that the 2018 draft was basically four years ago right you know 2018 2019 2020 2021 that's four years right there since the 2018 draft which means guess what all of our 2018 draftees, the guys that we took four years ago, are going to be free agents after this 2021 season, which means we're going to have to decide whether or not to keep them. And because of that, I want to take a look back at the 2018 draft class and see how good it was, at least in my opinion. I guess I should put the disclaimer out there. It is my opinion. This is not a fact. This is just how I feel about it. And I've always felt good about the 2018 draft class. I know recently a lot of people have been going back and saying it wasn't good. Some I've even heard call it a bad draft class. I don't necessarily think that. And before I get too sidetracked, let me just hop right into it with the number two overall pick from 2018, Saquon Barkley, running back for the New York Football Giants. Now, it's no secret that Saquon is my favorite player on the Giants right now. He's one of the players that I've like held in such high regard. Like, I, I love this guy so much and love seeing him on the field so much that I have him up there as one of my favorite Giants of all time. That's how much, like, that's how good I think Saquon is. That's how much I appreciate that man. And obviously, because of the fact that the Giants haven't been good recently, the Saquon pick has been scrutinized and beaten to death like a dead horse. But that's not what I'm here to do, and I'm not here to argue against it either. I'm just here to say... This is a good player that we got in the 2018 draft at second overall. At the time of the 2018 draft, he was the best player in the entire draft. A lot of people agree with that. It was almost a consensus, not just amongst the quote unquote experts, but also, you know, regular fans, guys on Twitter, guys on YouTube, guys on Instagram, Facebook. It was almost a consensus that Saquon was the best player in the draft. And we got the best player in the draft, in my opinion. We got a number two overall, and he has had a great impact on this team despite the struggles, you know what I'm saying? Despite having a terrible offensive line in 2018, he still got 1,300 rushing yards, and he still got 2,000 yards from scrimmage despite being injured and should have been out for six weeks in 2019. He came back just after three, still got 1,000 yards on the ground, and still got 400 through the year. You know, that's uh, 1,400 scrimmage yard right there. He has, throughout his career, despite challenges, has been a great running back for the Giants. And you could only think what he could do with some more pieces around him. Now, 2020, of course, he went down with the ACL tear. And that was very early on. He didn't do much the first game. But that's because, you know, Pittsburgh was sending basically everybody on defense to him. And our offensive line really struggled at the beginning of the year. The offensive line got really better in the second half. I mean, they are part of the reason that Gallman had a nice run there. And you could only imagine if Saquon was back there, maybe he could have done a little bit something. Maybe he could have still somehow, with the terrible line play for the first eight games, somehow still salvage another, you know, thousand yard season. Of course, Saquon does have his troubles as well along with his good traits he still needs to learn how to pass block a bit more he's still a bit skittish you know uh, i'd like for him to punch it up the gut you know a little bit more not necessarily always bounce it on the outside but that's the type of player he is he's always looking for that home run hitter with good reason as well because he's one of the few players in the nfl in my opinion that could legitimately score from anywhere on the field whether he's you know in the receiving game or in the running game he is, in my opinion, one of the best running backs in the entire league when healthy. And that's going to be what we're going to try and see this year. But of course, we're, we are all assuming right now that the Giants do finish up the offensive line in the draft. And I do think, you know, if they pick up where they left off last year, this will be the best line he's had in his entire career. And in addition to that, 
it will be once again the second time in his career that he's had a number one wide receiver with Kenny Galli on the outside and the first time he had it he had 2,000 yards from scrimmage that does help they're not going to be stacking the box anymore this was a good pick this is a home run pick in my opinion can't wait for him to get back and I could do a whole vid on Saquon I already spent just like four minutes on him let's go on to the next guy picked in the second round Will Hernandez guard now left guard for the Giants and Will Hernandez is a person that's coming under a lot of scrutiny recently from everybody including myself but you know I have been guilty of talking about Hernandez like oh man I'm you know I'm kind of disappointed he can't get back to where he was in his rookie year or I'm kind of disappointed that his rookie year was his best year let's clear the year here Will Hernandez is a good guard all right he's a good guard he's an average above average guard in the NFL he's a good guard very good on his best days and he is the left guard of the giants in my opinion i think this is a guy we definitely re-sign and of course with saquon as well i can't believe i didn't say that i think we're gonna pick up his 50 year option i already finished with the saquon section though for will hernandez i think he's gonna be the left guard you know past his rookie deal this is a guy that's a mauler he's a guy that gets it done in the run game and is honestly good in pass protection as well i i really have no complaints about will a lot of the things that people you know gripes that they have about him is is just that his rookie year was his best year in my opinion he can get back to that form you know what i'm saying i feel like a lot of people aren't satisfied with his performance because of the fact they expected him to be some type of all pro lineman or something like nah that's never what he was gonna be he was always just gonna be a really good nfl lineman and another thing to to note here is that while he did have a little bit of a sophomore slump in 2019 once again that 19 line you know what i'm saying that 2019 line was was pretty bad and in 2020 i think it's super underrated how much covid 19 affected this guy all right, you know, um, I can't speak for athletes, but I can't speak from personal experience. Um, you know, when when you get 19, bro, it hits you like a Mack truck, and you just feel tired at all times, and and at the the worst times as well, you just feel like you can't do anything. That's really the biggest symptom, at least for a young guy. It's not like I was dying or anything, but you know, I was just feeling super tired. I felt like the energy was drained out of me. I could only imagine what it does to a guy that's like 300 pounds and you know playing professional football. I mean, we all saw how it affected Miles Garrett and people understood that. I'm not sure why we can't understand it for Will. And I do think he's going to be better in 2021. I like him and Andrew Thomas on the left side. I like our new offensive line coach in Robert Sale. And I like the fact that Pat Flaherty is back. This was another good pick and somebody else that I expect the Giants to pick up. Now, after Will, we got one of my favorite picks from the Giants in recent memory in the third round. That is Lorenzo Carter, the Zoe Carter out of Georgia, outside linebacker for the Giants. And it's no secret, Lorenzo is probably my second favorite player out of this draft class. Man, I absolutely love this dude. I don't know why, but, you know, I, I just look at Lorenzo. Coming out of college, I had really high hopes for him. You know, he didn't necessarily disappoint me. He just kind of fell short of them. And in 2020, I had picked him to be our breakout player of the year. I thought he was going to be a guy that was going to get us 10 sacks. And to be fair... He looked really good in 2020. To be fair, he started off a little bit slow. You know, he, he did play in five games, only one sack, but we all watched those games. We saw the work he was putting in. He was getting pressure. He was getting real close to the quarterback. He looked the best, you know, to be in the best form of his career, in my opinion. And with the year Leo had, with the year Leonard Williams had, and if we, we're going to say Leo could replicate that in 2020, and in general, our defensive line can, because the pass rushing ability of our defensive line has improved this offseason, that's only going to help him out, not to mention the secondary is now one of the most elite in the NFL. That's only going to help him out. I really think he's going to be once again poised to come back here and be like a 7 to 10 sack guy for us. I think that's what his ceiling is. I think Carter, at the end of the day, is a really good number two outside linebacker, a really good you know number two option at the edge position or just at the pass rushing you know in general to be a pass rusher for any team seven to ten sacks and i could live with that and you got that in the third round i really like that we still got his college coach and kevin sure on the linebacking staff which was a big reason i believed him in in the first place in 2020 and now in addition to sure we got a guy that sure loves to work with in jeremy pruitt you, those guys in the linebacking court i feel like are going to do wonders for us when it comes to coaching and it's not like Zoe's a one-trick pony. He's not just somebody that's, you know, good 
in pass rushing ability his best ability though is his run stuffing he's a great outside linebacker when it comes to stuffing the run never forget in 2019 where they actually put this guy at defensive tackle sometimes to line up there and go out and stuff a run it was kind of hilarious but just goes to show you how good he is do i think we're gonna pick up his you know contract though do i think we're gonna extend them it really depends on the year he has i would love to do it but i feel like this year is gonna determine whether or not the giants re-sign him and it's not gonna be a big contract no matter what in my opinion next up we got at pick 69 overall nice we picked a guy named bj the giants are absolute geniuses bj hill defensive tackle for the giants another one of these guys that i actually really love to pick up and i always say it online some people think i'm joking but no it's a fact bj hill is the giants rookie sack um record holder now of course sacks weren't recorded in lt's rookie year so lt unofficially holds it but the fact remains that bj hill is the one that officially holds it i think he had five and a half sacks his rookie year but he hasn't done anything pass rushing wise since or actually just anything on the field since big reason for that in 2019 his sophomore year he was having a bit of a sophomore slump and then the giants traded for leo leo kind of basically replaced bj in the starting lineup although Although last year was the lowest amount of times he was on the field in terms of snap counts only at uh, 69 <laughs> snaps and BJ Hill is one of the reasons the Giants were comfortable in letting go of Valman Thompson he's one of the reasons the other reason is Dexter Lawrence because guys he is a really good defensive tackle that is part of a really good defensive tackle depth He's a guy that could play both the nose, which is why people have entertained him being the direct replacement for Donald Thompson, putting him at the nose and leaving Dexter Lawrence out of that, you know, it's either right or left defensive end position or keep BJ at the right or left defensive end position because he does have that pass rushing ability. He can push the pocket a bit and then keep moving Dexter over to the nose tackle. I personally think BJ Hill could be a really good guy, maybe a low key a monster opposite of Leonard Williams if he's playing there with starter snaps. Cause once again, he hasn't played starter snaps since 2018. He did play it for like half of 2019. We got Leo like basically around the trade that line, right? And his snaps has decreased since, but with Sean Spence coaching the D-line, and with Leonard Williams across from him, if he sees legitimate starter reps, this guy is going to be somebody that Giants fans are going to get to know real nice and real well. However, with the signing of that Vikings defensive lineman, Ifidi Odenigbo, that may step in his way. And that's kind of been the story of BJ Hill. He's just always had somebody ahead of him. Now, if he could manage to beat this guy out in preseason, in training camp, if he can manage to somehow beat him out legitimately and get that starting job, I'm even more confident in him. Because as of right now, I do think Afidi is better than BJ Hill, but I'm not completely counting him out. And because of that, this is another guy where I'm like, this season will determine whether or not the Giants will bring him back. Now, I hope they do because him as a depth player, guys, if you got BJ Hill as a depth player, somebody that in my eyes is, you know, a starter in the NFL, not a star, but a starter, good starting guy. You know, he's a good tackle that has good pass rushing ability and can still stuff the run well. 6 3 3 11, nice size to him, really good frame to him. If you could keep him as depth, you're set at the line position. And that's why the defensive line is still, in my opinion, the strongest part of this defense, not the secondary. In addition to that is RJ McIntosh, the guy we got in the sixth round, I believe, in the 2018 draft, and the last guy I'm gonna talk about for this video. And RJ McIntosh, he's good depth, just like everybody. If you're noticing a trend here, why I think the 2018 draft is so good, we got two really good starters, potentially three with Lorenzo Carter, and then two good depth pieces on the defensive line. Um, but the thing with RJ is injuries and also because he's literally depth, I don't think he's actually a star. I think he's just somebody that's a good rotational guy. I don't really expect us to re-sign him. Maybe we do. I could be proven wrong. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we, we let BJ Hill walk and RJ is the guy we re-sign. But he's always had injury issues. You know, in 2018, for most of his rookie season, he wasn't even seeing the field. And last year, there's not even a single stat recorded on him. So he was out with injury as well. I can't even remember if he was out with injury or not. He's not somebody I really expect the Giants to re-sign, but um, he's kind of a defensive end playing in a, a defensive tackle spot, if that makes sense. Like, I look at RJ, and I honestly think he's best fitted to play 4-3 defensive end, and we got him out here playing, you know, basically 3-4 D tackle. And because of that, because he has a little bit of more quickness, and, you know, he's a bit long, and he's on the inside, sometimes he gets a step on the old lineman guys but you know there's a lot of negatives there's a reason this guy was taken in the fifth round like he doesn't have the you know the weight that you need in my opinion to be on the inside and the talent in general isn't there to be a starter which is why i'm like he's good depth but you know it's the injuries that's really gonna derail this guy and i don't really expect him to be 
re-signed by the Giants. I'll be honest with you guys. Um, even though I do like him, right? And there was another guy, of course, there was um Kyle Oletta, but we don't speak about him because he's no longer on the team. But that's what I thought about the 2018 draft class. I see everybody on here as a potential future giant, as a potential, you know, giant that gets a second contract. And I still think this was a really good draft. You guys let me know what you think. Put your thoughts and comments down below. This video is running a bit long, so I'm gonna try and end it right here. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.